Welcome back to the Knowledge Academy's YouTube channel. We are back with new video on how to create database in MySQL. In this comprehensive tutorial, we'll embark on a journey through the intricate world of database management, exploring everything from the basics of database creation to advanced techniques for optimizing performance and efficiency. So, be ready with your laptop and PC, settle into your most comfortable chair, and let's dive deep into the realm of MySQL databases before we delve into the technical intricacies of MySQL, let's take a moment to ensure that everyone is on the same page. MySQL is a popular open source relational database management system that allows users to store, manage and retrieve data with ease. MySQL Workbench serves as the graphical user interface for interacting with MySQL databases, providing users with a user-friendly environment for database design, development and administration. First things first, ensure that you have my SQL server and my SQL workbench installed on your system. If not, check out our previous video in this my SQL playlist. You can get the link to previous videos in our description below. Let's first open my SQL workbench, search for my SQL workbench and open it. Click on local instance and provide password, which you have set while installing the MySQL. Once connected, you're ready to begin creating your first database. Now, let's talk about databases. In the world of MySQL, a database is a structured collection of data that is organized into tables, each of which consists of rows and columns. Think of a database as a virtual filing cabinet, with each table representing a different category or type of information. For example, you might have a database for storing customer information, another for tracking inventory and so on. Let's head over to the workbench and learn how to create it. To create a new database in MySQL, we use the create database statement followed by the desired name of the database. Let's say we want to create a database for a fictional online bookstore called Bookworld. We can execute the following SQL statement to create the database using statement create database bookworld. Once executed, my SQL will create a new database named Bookworld and make it available for use. After this, we will be learning how to create table and how to set data types to column present in that table. With our database created, the next step is to define the structure of our data using tables. Tables are the building blocks of a database, representing individual entities or objects within the system. Each table consists of columns, also known as fields or attributes, and rows also known as records or tuples. Columns define the types of data that can be stored in the table, while rows represent individual instances of that data. While creating the table, we will be setting data types to each column, which we are going to have in this table. But before that, let's first understand what data types in SQL are. First things first, what are SQL data types? Well, SQL, or Structured Query Language, has data types which define the type of data stored in a column of a database table. Each column in a table is associated with a specific data type, which determines the kind of data that can be inserted into that column. SQL data types can be broadly categorized into several groups, including numeric character, date and time, and miscellaneous data types. Let's explore each of these categories in detail. First is numeric data types. Numeric data types are used to store numeric values, such as integers, decimals, and floating point numbers. In SQL, common numeric data types include in, which is integer, float, which is floating point number, and decimal, which are fixed point number. Let's understand with an example. If we're creating a table to store employee salaries, we might use the decimal data type to ensure precision in the values stored. Let's take a look at how we can define a decimal column in SQL. In the workbench write, create table employee salaries, employee ID and primary key, salary decimal, 10 comma 2. In this example, we've created a table called employee salaries with employee ID as int, which is integer, and took that as primary key as it will act as permanent identifier. Now next go with a column named salary defined as decimal 10 comma 2. This means the column can store decimal numbers with a maximum precision of 10 digits and two digits after the decimal point. Now next is character data types. Character data types are used to store textual data such as names, addresses and descriptions. In SQL, common character data types include car which is fixed length character string and var car which is variable length character string. Let's say we're creating a table to store customer names and addresses. 
we might use the VARCAR data type for flexibility in accommodating varying lengths of text. Let's write the code in Workbench to understand it better. Write create table customers, customer ID, int, primary key, name VARCAR50, address, VARCAR100. In this example, we've created a table called customers with columns for customer names and addresses both defined as var car data types with specified maximum lengths. Now let's move on to date and time data types. Date and time data types are used to store temporal data, such as dates, times, and timestamps. In ESQL, common date and time data types include date, time, and timestamp. Let's imagine we're creating a table to track product inventory with columns for purchase date and time. We would use the date and time data types to store this information accurately. We can write it as create table product inventory, product ID, int, primary key, purchase date, date, purchase time, time. In this example, we've created a table called product inventory with columns for product IDs, purchase dates, and purchase times, each associated with their respective date and time data types. Now the last one is miscellaneous data types. Lastly, SQL offers miscellaneous data types for specialized use cases, such as storing binary data, JSON documents, and spatial data. These data types provide flexibility for handling diverse data formats. For instance, if we're building a database for a multimedia application, we might use the blob that is binary large object data type to store images and videos efficiently. Create table multimedia assets. Asset ID in primary key, asset data. In this example, we've created a table called multimedia assets with a column named asset data defined as the blob data type capable of storing binary large object. And there you have it, folks. We've covered the essentials of SQL data types, including numeric character, date and time, and miscellaneous data types. Understanding these data types is crucial for designing efficient and reliable database schema. Remember, choosing the right data type for each column ensures data integrity, optimizes storage space, and enhances query performance. So, the next time you're creating a database, be sure to select the appropriate data types for your columns. Let's again come back to our previous example where we created database. Now let's create table with column names and data types. Let's continue with our book world example and create a table for storing information about books. We'll define columns such as title, author, genre, publication date, and to create the table, we use the create table statement followed by the name of the table and a list of column definitions. Here's an example of how we might create the books table. In this example, we're creating a table named books with columns for the books, title, author, genre, publication date, and price. The ID column serves as the primary key, uniquely identifying each record in the table. The auto increments keyword ensures that each new record is assigned a unique identifier automatically. Now that we've defined the structure of our database and created our first table, it's time to populate it with data. Let's add some sample data to our books table. Here's an example of how we might insert a few records into the table. In this example, we're inserting three records into the books table each representing a different book. Each record consists of values for the title, author, genre, publication date, and price columns, matching the structure of our table. You can check the table by writing select star from books command. These commands are used to fetch data from table. We will be learning more about it in coming video the use of select and from statements. This command will show you the table that you have created. Whether you're a seasoned database administrator or a novice programmer, just beginning to explore the world of data management, I hope this tutorial has provided you with valuable insights and practical guidance for working with MySQL databases. Remember, database management is as much an art as it is a science, requiring creativity, critical thinking, and attention to detail. As you continue your journey in the realm of MySQL, don't be afraid to experiment, ask questions, and seek out new challenges. The world of database management is vast and ever-evolving with new technologies and techniques emerging all the time. By staying curious and embracing lifelong learning, you'll be well equipped to tackle whatever challenges come your way. And so, dear learners, as we bid farewell to this tutorial and set our sights on the next video where we will be learning how to clone data and use interstatement, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting and informative content.
Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update 